You're still watching In The Loop. Let's take a quick look at the PSE as it reopens after that long break. local stock market opens today after being on holiday yesterday. Last Friday, we saw massive sell-offs in the local bursts along with the rest of the region with net foreign outflows of $30.5 million. Today, the index fell a tenth of a percent at the open. However, it did recover quickly, adding about seven-tenths of a percent or around 45.8 basis points in just about half an hour of trading. Currently, the PSE index is up one and seven-tenths of a percent with the pressure tracking it still at one and three-tenths of a percent in the green. Let's take a look at some of today's movers. Let's look at San Miguel. San Miguel shares, um, you know, despite its power unit getting regulatory clearance for 14 power supply deals in Luzon, trading flat today shares still 46 pesos and 80 centavos apiece. Now, Moralco's power generating unit, Amgen, and a Thai power company uh, called Egco have a joint venture under the name San Buena Ventura Power Limited, and they have secured a 42 peso or 42 billion peso loan rather to build a coal-fired power plant in Quezon province. You see Miralco shares up just a slight bit. It's still trading a bit flat right now. Meanwhile, DMCI, DMCI's power unit rather is also putting up a power plant. This time it's a diesel-fired one in the town of Brooks Point in Palawan. DMCI power president Nestor Davida said that this decision is part of their missionary electrification commitment to increase their presence in the underserved areas of Palawan. DMC shares up three and six tenths of one percent at the break. Now, holdings companies recovering from massive losses last Friday. We see them all in the green today, looking good. We see SMPH, JG Summit, Abuetiz, Equity Ventures, and Alliance Global all up right now. And here are some of the other movers in the PSE today. We see BDO shares up. Um, about uh, almost 4%. It was up as much as 44 this morning, poised for its biggest gain in over a year. Uh, but like I said, uh, last Friday was not good for all shares. BDO closed down over 3% last Friday. And STI shares rose 11% at the open, currently up about 8.5% now with over 113 million shares changing hands so far. And Universal Rabina shares uh, down about 4% after Macquarie cuts its rating to neutral, putting its 12-month target price at 210 pesos per share. And PLDT uh, getting an increase in a Bloomberg consensus analyst rating. PLDT shares up 4 and 8 tenths of 1%. And big developments in China with the yuan adding as a, or being added as a reserve currency rather and posting the lower than expected PMI. Juliet Sali is in Hong Kong to give us a rundown of how this has affected markets across the region. Juliet. Yes, good afternoon to you, Sean. Well, it's a much better day for investors in the region. We have the MSCI Asia Pacific Index currently up by 1.5%. So stocks certainly starting December on a positive front after that monthly drop in November. And we're also seeing commodity-linked currencies strengthen as investors weigh that uh, manufacturing data ahead of key monetary policy decisions in the US and Europe. Now, in China, we do actually have the Shanghai Composite in the red, uh, down by about half of 1%, so holding on to that one-month low. And that comes up after the official gauge of manufacturing sank to its lowest level in three years. However, a private measure, the Taishin manufacturing gauge, came in stronger than expected. In Hong Kong, the yuan little changed in offshore trading after the IMF said that the Chinese currency will join the dollar, euro, pound and yen in its special drawing rights basket. We've just had some data released out of Hong Kong showing that Macau casino revenue in November fell 32.3% year on year. We are though seeing a good gain coming through on the Hang Seng, which is up by 1.7%. China Resources Power, one of the best performers. In Japan, a weaker yen lifting stocks for the first time in three days. The Nikkei 225 up 1%. Data released in Japan today has showed capital spending jumped more than expected as company profits increased in the third quarter. And in Korea, we're watching Samsung Electronics. A shake-up at the top there. A new president of the company's smartphone business. The unit has really been struggling to defend its global lead and increase its profits over the last two years. Sharp, uh, Samsung shares, I should say, up 2.5%. 
the Cosby is firmer by 1.6%. And we are heading into the close in Australia. An interest rate decision there today. As expected, no change to the official cash rate of 2%. But data did show house prices in Sydney dropped the most in five years in November. The big four banks all up around 2% and the ASX 200 up by 1.8%. Back to you, Sean. Thanks for that, Juliet. In other news, a few hours from now, the court will decide whether U.S. Marine Lance Corporal Joseph Scott Pemberton is guilty or not. He is the prime suspect in the murder case of transgender Jennifer Laude, who was found dead in a motel near Subic Freeport last year. Mon Gualvis joins us live from Olongapo City. Mon, where is Scott Pemberton right now? Sean's security remains tight around Olongapo Hall of Justice where U.S. Marine Lance Corporal Joseph Scott Pemberton is waiting the verdict of the murder case filed against him. Supporters of slain transgender Jeffrey Jennifer Laude showed up to demand Pemberton's conviction ahead of the verdict. They're also calling the government to detain the U.S. Marine at the National Believed Prison. The rallyists made a miniature prison bars where a photo of Pemberton is locked behind it. The group also composed a song for Laude. Most supporters are part of the LGBT community from Baguio, Bataan, Pampanga, and Metro Manila. The group is also protesting the Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement, or EDCA. They claim that this is a tool for abusive behavior by U.S. forces. Almost a hundred local policemen and a few special action forces have been deployed to maintain security. Sean, this morning I was able to talk to Mark Susselbach, the German fiancé of Laude. He said that most likely Pemberton will be most likely acquitted of the case because of the poor judge justice system of our country as he described it. Because as we remember, Susel Back has been de de deported from our country after illegally entering a military facility where the suspect has been detained. Meanwhile, this time the family members of Laude as well as the councils of both the prosecution and defense are already here because the promulgation will start at promptly 1 o'clock this afternoon. Sean? Thank you very much, Mon Gualvez. Here are today's top corporate news. Ayala Land is seeking SEC approval for shelf registrations of up to 50 billion pesos in debt instruments. It plans to publicly offer up to 20 billion pesos worth of bonds and a maximum of 10 billion pesos in commercial papers to be issued out of the shelf registration. Still on real estate, 8990 Holdings breaks ground today for an 8 billion peso project in Manila's Tondo District. The mass housing developer is building medium-rise condominiums at Vita Street with more than 13,000 units in a two-story mall. It will launch another township within, with nearly 25,000 residential units along Ortigas Avenue Extension in Pasig. And homegrown liquor maker Emperador is acquiring Spain's Fundador for $291 million, $291 million from U.S.-based Beam Suntory. This all-cash euro transaction worth 13.8 billion pesos will further boost Emperador's stature as the world's biggest brandy maker. The deal includes iconic, the iconic Fundador brand and production operations in the Spanish municipalities of Jerez and Tomelloso. It will immediately have an impact on the sales and profit of Emperador, which is poised for its highest close in three months. Philippine Ambassador to Spain, Carlos Salinas, hailed the latest investment in Spain. We are very happy that this extends to investments in Spain. And as a matter of fact, the Philippines now is one of the largest investors in Spain. And it, we welcome this as now we are able to make a mark. We're able to have a stronger presence. We're able to be in the radar of the global investment arena. And it's the 1st of December, one last month to eke out gains from the PSE. Joining us is technical analyst Miko Sayo to talk about his forecast. Miko, one more month to eke out gains. We see um, the market, of course, not doing too well in the face of all the volatility in yeah. the world. In spite of that, companies like Emperador, Jollibee, buying up uh, companies abroad. Right. How, so can you tell us the state of the market right now as we approach the end of 2015? Yeah. Well. We're, we're now trading in the most, uh, traditionally the most bullish month in the calendar, which is December. You know, so supposedly our market has, should have been very strong already in November. But, you know, this, this uh, issue on the Fed meeting and interest rate hikes on, uh, on mid-December is, you know, uh, confusing participants in the market. So 
expect some choppy trading between now and the end of the year. Okay, so in general, you're expecting um, this December 2015 to be a lot more shaky compared to other Decembers in the yeah, past. Yeah, right. Well, it's it's a December which is supposedly bullish. It's a pre-election year which is supposed to, supposedly bullish. But, you know, because of this uh, anticipation of rate hikes in the U.S. and around the world, so it's quite uh, confusing. What about next year? Uh, as we enter the new year, of course, um, yeah. we're heading towards the elections. Do you expect right. this to turn around or do you expect it to stay more or less the same as what we're experiencing right now? Well, you know, um, uh, if you've been looking at the, the, uh, the st statistics in the last four elections, if you invested your money in December 1 and sold it, on the election day, you would have made an average return of about 14 percent. But uh, you know, because of this, again, because of these interest rate hikes in mm -hmm. the U.S. and around the world, so it's uh, everything's kind of shaken you know, up, so right? Yeah. You know, so this year is kind of a little bit different. You're, you're acknowledging yeah. that at least. Yeah. So uh, you know, there's 50 percent of the population are bullish because it's elections. You know, there's government spending. It's uh, it's December. Mm -hmm. Then 50 percent of the population is bearish because you know, because uh, these rate hikes are coming, so expect some chop, uh, a choppy, choppy waters market. ahead. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to market valuation. Yeah. A lot of the analysts we have over here are yeah. saying that our market is overvalued. Do you agree with this assessment? Uh, yeah, it is overvalued. I think we're trading at about 18 to 19 times uh, 2015 earnings. Uh, uh, I'm not sure about next year. Maybe growth will be coming up at about 10 to 15 percent. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, we're still quite overvalued compared with other markets. Was that a, um, what about the annual outflow? Uh, according to our Bloomberg analysis or yeah. data from the Bloomberg terminal, they are telling us that this is looking to be a net outflow year. Is that going to hit us a lot? I mean, the local bars, local market, and the listed companies. Right. Well, uh, I think the biggest problem of the markets right now is that, you know, there's like 50 billion pesos that uh, the foreign funds already sold. and. There's, so who who bought these stocks? And these are the local funds, you know. So fif there's 50 billion pesos that the local funds bought. The qu the question now is who's going to buy them higher, mm -hmm. you know? So unless these foreign funds come back in, uh, we're just going to be stuck in the range at best. Okay. Thank you very much for your insight and your input and joining us, Miko Sayo. After the break, the country's inclusion in the U.S.-led Trans-Pacific Partnership deal might be necessary, according to a Bloomberg Intelligence report.